fractures of the bone, a break of the bone, a fracture and a break is interchangeable. The question is, does bone heal stronger or weaker after a break? To understand this, we need to appreciate the anatomy of the bone, in brief, of course, and how the healing process actually works to some degree or another. So let's have a look at breaks itself. <clears throat> when we look at a break, a break or a fracture essentially is an interchangeable term. What we refer here is that there is a breach in the outer layer of the bone, a breach in the cortex, what's known as the periosteal layer. If there is a break, we then define there are various types of breaks. There are different names, but aside from the eponyms, there are different types of fractures. Keeping this to the point in terms of healing and, and whether a bone is stronger or weaker, we understand or we need to understand the most important part in that once a bone is broken, have the two fragments that are broken actually moved? Is there displacement? And that's the question to be had. So what do we do? We image. We look at x-ray imaging. If the clinical uh, context suggests that actually there is a fracture but the x-ray is inconclusive or doesn't demonstrate a fracture, then we'll consider doing a CT or performing a CT scan of the same area. And that will give us a better resolution and a clearer picture. CT, of course, carries its risk of extra ionization, etc. So we reserve that only in situations where we are clinically suspecting a fracture in situations of an inconclusive X-ray or otherwise. Going back to the bone itself, so I'm going to use my pen as, as an example or to better understand. So let's assume this is a bone. First and foremost, when we image the bone, we always X-rays, we always do rule of two. Two images, we look at one view and then we look at a second view from a different angle. The reason for that is you look at my pen here, for example, and say that's a shaft. There is no breach in that at all, agreeably. Okay, But then when I look at it, so let's say that's the front, um, so what we call the AP view. We then go to the side and we look at the lateral view. And oh, lo and behold, there's a fracture over here. You see that line there? We're going to use that to demonstrate as a fracture. So here we've got a break, we've got a fracture, but the fragments have not moved. So this is a fracture with minimal displacement or no displacement. In the situation here, the best thing would be really to put a plaster of pyrus on and just leave it well alone and let it heal. No problem at all, assuming there's no neurovascular compromise, of course. In other circumstances, what will happen is you'll get a break and when you look at the imaging, you'll see this. So you will see significant displacement of the actual. So let's demonstrate again. You can see displacement of the actual uh, bone here. So looking at this displacement, what we've got to appreciate is how that's going to heal. Now let's look at bone inside. <clears throat> inside the bone, it's not actually uh, fully dense. So um, if I use chocolate bars in, as an example, you look at the dairy milk or you look at Yorkie bar, uh, these guys are fully dense inside and there is no pockets of air. Uh, that is not what bone looks like. In fact, on the contrary, bone is actually aerated on the inside. It's actually, um, it's got a bit of a scaffolding, what we call the trabecular. Um, you look at your crunchy bar, the honeycomb structure that is, or you look at your aero chocolate and on the inside again, you've got the pockets of air. That's precisely what bone looks like on the inside. Um, bone, once it's dried, is not as half as heavy as one assumes. It's the water content or the liquid content rather that gives bone its weight. So once you've actually uh, dried bone out, it's a lot lighter than it than people is, uh, think it might be, and it's a lot weaker as well for that matter. So not as half as dense as, as one might think otherwise. Now, understanding that scaffolding on the inside, the trabecular structure that is, what you appreciate is when these two fragments are, are, are now displaced, they've got to actually create, the body has to create a scaffolding between them, a bridge between them. And that's precisely what's going to go on. So there are two types of cell in, in, in terms of bone healing, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Osteoblasts lay down bone, osteoclasts actually remodel, recast the area and, and essentially refine that, that bone that has been, that has laid down. So you usually take six to eight weeks for bone healing to happen and by about week three what happens is that the gap that is uh, you actually create a scaffolding between that and there's a, 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 a non-defined uh, or an undefined lump of bone around that break so it's a bit like literally bandaging something just wrapping up a bit of bandage around it uh, momentarily uh, or in the immediate term that 
is what we call a soft callus because it's still quite weak. It hasn't set. Um, over the next kind of uh, two or three weeks, that that soft callus will become a hard callus. Why? Because the bone will intensify, mineralize, and become stronger, and the osteoclast will actually start to remodel it, shave away at it, and refine it as best as possible to resemble and make it neat and 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 uh, uh, do away with the extra materials. That is, that's a hard callus. Now. If we leave the displacement as it is, then unfortunately, um, that once the hard callus forms, will actually give us a little bit of trouble later on as it impedes on the surrounding structures, particularly if there is uh, if there are lots of nerves passing the area. So clavicle, for example, the collarbone, is one area where we want to ideally reduce uh, displacement because you've got the brachial plexus, the network of nerves that runs just under the collarbone and above the first rib, a very narrow gap, what's known as the thoracic outlet, and that then goes down into the arm. That's your um, thoracic outlet syndrome, and these are typical presentations we see in the context where perhaps there's been mismanagement or otherwise of the, the actual collarbone fractures. Um, going back to here, uh, in the a &E setting, many a time uh, we see uh, fractures with displacement, significant displacement for that matter. Under all circumstances, all fractures, uh, the, the main thing to assess for is neurovascular compromise, making sure there's no compromise to the, the circulation, that the, the limbs are well perfused or whatever area is, is well perfused and that there is no compromise to the, uh, the, the nerves and that there's no nerve damage. So that's a neurovascular compromise. Now, what we do is we reduce the actual uh, displacement. So we do we manipulate that. So we look at, we assess the actual x-rays, both images. We, we try to understand what direction, what orientation, get the trajectory, and actually um, bring that uh, when we then put the plaster on to set the bones in place and hold them in place. We actually manipulate and re what we call a reduction of the fracture. That happens and then you get the, the actual callus is forming and the healing process. The smaller the gap, the less scaffolding that the body has to lay down and therefore the faster the healing process. So again, it promotes a better prognosis, quite understandably. It's less pain as well and so on and so forth. So numerous advantages, of course. Going back to the, the main question of is the bone stronger or weaker after a fracture? Now that you understood You've got the initial bandaging, and then that's refined initially with a soft callus, now it's a hard callus. When we look at x-rays, we actually see hyperopacification or, or a, a more dense opacification, uh, which essentially means a, a brighter um, a brighter area on the bone. And that usually suggests, so for example, in cases where there was a previous fracture or an old fracture, that will be more dense because there's there's a greater absorption of the x-rays by that area of the bone. And that's why we recognize old fractures on x-rays. So in these situations, <coughs> you'll get <coughs> you'll get hyperopacification and therefore essentially there is more bone over that area that has been broken the fracture that is and therefore the actual bone is stronger so broken bones at the site of the break it's actually stronger not weaker contrary to mis common misconception thank you for watching stay safe